we will start in a few minutes. Okay, hello everyone. Nice to see our dear charmers here. I'm looking at the list of participants. I see usual names. Okay, welcome to another session of our action research, action learning online lecture series. And we are very fortunate today to have with us all the way from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> a good friend and alumni of the, the LSU, Miss, I call he, I call her Patrice, okay, ang haba ng kanyang name, okay, so Pauline Therese, but I just call her Patrice, okay. So you know how our uh, online lecture works, but I'm not so sure if we have uh, new attendees today. So we have our um, featured speaker speak for the next hour or so. Okay, during the lecture, we encourage everyone to type in their comments, suggestions, reactions, thoughts, and ideas. Okay, that's what we want about Zoom meetings. Okay, and not the webinars, uh, like uh, uh, big uh, webinars where you don't, uh, you, you cannot interact with the speaker. So what we want for our participants is to help, to interact with one another and to, to interact with with the speaker and with uh, some guests who are uh, gurus also of action research. So while the lecture is going on, we encourage everyone to type in their thoughts and comments and, and, and whatever that they have in mind, okay? And we encourage everyone to, to participate in the discussion. And then at the end of the uh, lecture, we will have the usual Q&A and that is where all the questions are actually addressed and entertained, okay? Uh, we also post the link to the evaluation uh, evaluation form um, after the Q&A, so watch out for that. And then your e-certificate will be delivered to your inboxes right after you uh, um, do the, the evaluation form, okay? So at this point, uh, I'd like to call in uh, Dr. Dennis Emabo to introduce today's featured speaker. Hello, everyone. Good morning. Can I be heard? Yep. Yes. Loud and clear. Okay. So, good morning, everyone. Um, it's nice to be here in our one of in our charm. Uh, charm, no? Charm na ang tawag dito. Charm. Yes. So we, Community habit of action research on Mondays. Okay. Spread the That's news. right. <laughs> okay, so it's so unfortunate that Doc Bing it, uh, may not be able to be here because of uh, prior commitment, but we are so happy that um, we have been blessed by a wonderful season, a wonderful day for, for this morning, and we are so happy to be joined by um, one, of an, um, one of the amazing um, esteemed speakers that are, uh, is going to deliver um, a talk on writing in the realm of the classroom, how can teachers write about their practices? So for this morning, um, we will be joined by Pauline, Miss Pauline and Therese Mangulabnan. Uh, she is a currently or especially appointed assistant professor at the Department of Professional Development of Teachers in the University of Fukui, Japan. She is also a PhD candidate at the Graduate School of Humanities and Sciences, Nara Women's University. Her research theme is writing reflective practice records as means for collaborative and reflective inquiry, practice-based knowledge creation, and school-based professional development. School-based professional development, writing towards professional, Oh, yeah, school-based professional development, writing towards professional development. She obtained her bachelor's degree and master's units from the Science Education Department of De La Salle University and her master of education from the University of Kui. Um, she is currently involved in working group of the OECD Education 2030 Project, a researcher of OECD Japan Innovative School Networks, JICA, and African Knowledge Co-Creation Program. Her current personal research project are on online pedagogical collaboration between Filipino and children, teachers, and grassroots lesson studies in Lipa and Sarangani. She has given lectures and training on math education, reflective lesson study, building school-based 
learning communities in different countries such as Malawi, Uganda, Singapore, Myanmar, South Korea, Malta. She is a proud Lasallian educator committed to educating minds, touching hearts, and transforming lives and sharing things she is learning in Japan. And she believes that teaching always do ordinary things in an extraordinary way. Without further ado, let's put our attention to Miss Pauline. Um, before I begin or share my screen even, um, I have uploaded a file sa chat po. Can you download that? Because later on, we'll be using that. Paki download po. It's um, RPR Hideki Makita. So, yeah, while you're downloading, I'll now fix the sharing of the screen. And then for those who could, you know, show your camera, please do. Um, or and then if you have any comments or say questions any time of the talk, please please do write it on the chat box. I'm not very comfortable with Zoom because Singapore sanaya ko that I get to see, I get to hear the reactions. So every every time, it's just that I really don't like Zoom. Dito kasi ang classes namin, we had started doing face to face classes. But from April all the way to until August, we were doing online classes. So finally, um, we're a bit blessed that, um, yeah, we're now doing face-to-face. -face. Okay, I think this is good enough. And then if I do this one, it should be okay here. So I, I, I'm working on two computers, so you'd be see, you, you would see me looking at both screens. Okay, pa. So again, good morning, everyone. Um, this was a, what, conversation that started a year ago when Mom Dita and I were in Aksat. San niyo yung, oh God. Agusan del Norte. That's <laughs> the At Davao. Okay, close to Davao. Yeah. Exactly a year ago, right? Exactly a year ago. Yes, and um, I'm, I'm very happy, very happy to be here, given this chance to actually share some of the things that I'm learning here in Japan. And so I know we've been happy, because I've also been attending the different charm um, workshops, webinars. So I won't go through the details of what an action research is, yung mga ganong aspect. But what I would focus now on is the kind of action research that teachers here in Japan, or at least those that I'm working with, actually write about. So it's, um, today is entitled Writing in the Realm of the Classroom. How can teachers write about their practices? Uh -huh. Okay. So um, the main content really will be focusing on what do Japanese teachers write about? And then how are these Japanese teachers able to write about their own practices. So by practices, it depends on what kind of teacher you are. It could be classroom practices, but for some of our head teachers, say, or vice principals, principals, their practices might mean the teacher professional development program of the school. So for example, ako, the head teacher educator, ako, my practices would really be on teacher training. And then, of course, just to put some more significance into writing about these practices. Um, hopefully at the last part, if we'll have time, I would also want to share more on, are this even possible in the Philippines? Because I can always share all these things tapos kung hindi naman pala kaya sa Pilipinas, but um, ah, one for the books lang siya, which is for me, sayang. So for this talk, I would want to really share about one of my favorite lessons that I was able to get here in Japan. So just to put everything into context, um, this is not a self-introduction, but I am sharing this because I would want you to now try to imagine bakit dito yung, bakit nandito ako or bakit ito yung mga sasabihin ko later. So in the Philippines, I'm, I'm a very proud grad, the happy proud graduate of Dallas Hall University, Manila. I taught mathematics from elementary all the way to the university level. During that time, ang iniisip ko lagi as a teacher is, how do I deliver my content? Okay ba yung mga estudyante ko? Are my students satisfied? Are the scores okay? And then I personally, I, I 
am in love with math. So am I actually sharing that kind of fun and love to my students? Um, I like evaluation. So I enjoy creating exams, actually. So when I was taught in DLSU, my students would go, I'd always write there, enjoy the test. <laughs> Um, I, of course, personally, I would always want to grow as a teacher. So I was thinking of this. But when I was teaching in high schools now, I started thinking of, of course, of parents as well. Because you get to hear from parents. You get to talk to them too. Oops, sorry. And then in 2008, I started also like giving some talks to different groups during this time. Of course, I was focusing on pedagogy, on content, the different solutions on the problems that teachers have in the classroom. Of course, the fun part. During that time, I remember I was doing Singapore. Well, there's no such thing as Singapore math, but since I work closely with Singapore, then some of the heuristics they have, we share this all over the Philippines. But during that time, because it wasn't my classroom anymore, then we were, um, I was also thinking of the dynamics that is happening inside the classroom and in the school. And then in 2011, I became a school principal for three and a half years of a private school in Batangas. And then during that time, from content to thinking about my own personal professional growth, I had to start thinking of how can teachers the teachers that I was working with grow in and through experience. That was the time that I started thinking of, yes, conference. Well, of course, conferences are very good. They should have this. But on top of that, what is something more sustainable? How can they grow in and through experience? So this is the time I started thinking about how do you now develop real teamwork inside the school? Not just among the teachers, but among the parents and the teachers. I remember having um, a diary whenever the parents would come, every advisor that I have, they would have a diary, um, like a diary to the school. And then they would write, the parents, we would ask them to write a letter in front of the teachers, of course. And that starts um, another level of interaction between my teachers and the parents. Um, and of course, during that time, I was now looking at the dynamics of how does the classroom affect the parents in the long run. So our motto back then was, as a principal, I need to make sure that my teachers are happy because happy teachers create happy classes. Happy classes makes the students happy. And when the students are happy, the parents are also happy. If the parents are happy, then the whole society is happy. So that was now how I, my thinking as a professional had progressed over the years. And then during that time also, I was lucky enough to be a part-time lecturer at SED um, that back said, back said back then was still the science education. Uh, I was in the science education department of the College of Education and then also COS. So during that time, you know, people would say like, kailangan content, content, heavy content. And then those who are in education, you paano naman yung pedagogy? So during that time that I was teaching in both colleges, I was actually, um, very lucky to be able to see and also think of how do we now connect actually and create stronger ties between the content and the pedagogy. So, and then during that time, I was very lucky to be given a chance to actually come to Fukui. To Fukui, so that's the whole map of Japan you would see here. Ito kami. It's very far from Tokyo, but it's, you can go there from Nagoya, Osaka. Um, one of the things why Fukui, because when I visited Fukui, I saw the classes and it was something like, ito yung mga nakasulat sa atin sa Pilipinas na gusto nating maabot, pero ngayon nakikita ko siya right in front of me. So Fukui here in Japan is known to have one of the highest academic and physical performances in national examinations, both for elementary and junior high school. That's why also I'm staying here. Kasi dito, di ba tayo, meron tayong national examination. Not, for example, dito, meron kami grade 5 and grade 8. Tapos, hindi lang siya the major subjects, kasama ang physical exam. So for the past 10 years, nag-rank ang Fukui lagi, 1, 2, or 3 lang. So... And then during that time, during that trip, these are some of the things that I was able to see up here. It's a junior high school math class. And then I saw elementary classes. This is the science class. And then, yeah, more, more, and more classes. But 
what you can see here is my first idea when I came to Japan, para silang robot na makikinig, makikinig lang. But actually, that time, what I saw, this isn't exactly the class that I saw, but this is the same as how the classes there are. Ganito po siya. 2015 as a graduate student. So during that time, yung mga inisip ko as a teacher educator back in the Philippines, as a principal, it has been evolving into oh nga, no? how are teachers, based on my, uh, as what I'm seeing here in yung graduate student ako, how are they learning in practice? Because I think this is something that our teachers in the Philippines, they have a lot of ideas. But the question is, how do they use these ideas and transform it para mas lalo silang gumaling ng gumaling? So I came across concepts like um, community of practice, Sean's, Donald Sean's reflection in action and on action, lesson study. And then my graduate, um, I'm a graduate student here, but at the same time, I was teaching at a junior high school, well, math and English, but I was, because I was also a teacher, I need to do lesson study in practice, I had to work with the Japanese teachers. I had to do inquiry and action research with the teachers. So I was, yes, reflecting on my own practice, but at the same time, I'm doing it with the Japanese teachers. And by 2017, um, I started working as a researcher. Um, so this was the time when I got involved in these different projects. And so I'm looking, I'm getting, I'm being able to see what is teacher education practice 
practices internationally. And because we're dealing with different ministries of education, we're looking at school organization and how can I, how can we design a more school-based professional development program? So parang nangyayari, conferences plus a more sustainable professional development in schools. And then at present, um, yeah, I am working with a lot of schools in and out of Japan doing lesson study community of practice, learning disciplines, organizational structure. So, and part of my work, I do always go to school. I have to go to school and observe my graduate students. And some of the things that I've seen really, really um, parallel, similar across different schools here is that they would not call their student groups, rather communities to create that sense of, you know, um, belongingness. There are always student leaders and committees, but all students, all 40 students in the class would be leaders of what, whatever committee. We do have intergrade level classes. So for example, um, for biology class, kasi may grade five until grade eight. So pare pareho sila plants, say for example, for this month, magkakaroon sila ng parang round table na, oh, dun sa grade 5, mahahalo sa grade 6, mahalo sa grade 7, grade 8. Tapos, at this level, what are what are the experiments you are doing? And the students are writing, well, it's like the newspaper that we have in the Philippines, but here, bawat committee, bawat student would always have their chance to be able to really share to the school what they're doing. Um, and this is not just true for junior high school. What you can see here is an elementary school classroom. Um, yeah, the responsibilities, for example, the picture here on the right, on my right, your right. Um, this is like the science and math leaders, and it's the students who are going to write there, ano yung gagawin mo as the leaders? So, as early as, as young as grade one, six year old, sila na yung leader, and then Marami silang stickers kasi nga sabi nila kung nagawa ba nila or hindi, etc. And then like what I have seen before coming here, um, really a typical class here would start with one big question. The students will try to do it on their own. Eventually, they would try to share. And then um, all these ideas are presented in the classroom. The, the teacher's idea could come last or the teacher could just say that, ah, my idea actually that I wanted to present was the same as group five. So this is a typical class here in Fukui. Um, in Japan, like the Philippines, we have the Central Ministry of Education, but every prefecture, which is like a province ngayon, we're autonomous to actually reinvent the curriculum. So that's why you'll hear me say Fukui, Fukui. This may not be a representative of the whole of Japan. Um, and was it possible, the, the, that kind of design, was it done during April and May no naka-quarantine kami and the classes were a bit online? Yes, actually. So ito yung katulad ng isang setup na nangyari sa isa sa mga schools sa amin. Um, basically, the students would receive the problem ahead of time. They would think about it. They would send it to the teachers. We used Zoom or Google Classroom, and then they would meet. And then the teacher would now be like listening, well, trying to listen to each of the groups. And then, kahit nag-iisa siya sa classroom na yes, nasa classroom si teacher, while nasa bahay mga bata, he will now try to write on the board the different ideas he got just so that it could still be shared to everybody else. So more or less, that's um, a very, very brief picture of how things are being done here in Japan. And how, be, well, based on my experience, how were they able to achieve that over the six years? I've, I've noticed that there's a very strong autonomy in designing the curriculum. The teachers do design their own curriculum, okay? And so why is that the case? Um, well, of course, it has something to do with the Japanese education system. The course of study, which is like the curriculum, um, is being reviewed every 10 years. Each school, according to the Ministry of Education, has the autonomy to design their own curriculum, which is sat in sa K-12, ganun na din po yung nakasulat. Um, they revise it every 10 years, tapos gradual siya ginagawa. For example, ngayon, 2020 this year, the grade one students are starting the new curriculum. By next year, it's the first year junior high school and 2022, it's the second year. But um, what does the new course of study want to achieve? 
And what is it designed for? So right now, the three main ideas that is being embedded, added in the new course of study is that teachers have to improve the classes with a focus on deep active learning. And it is being known for the Japanese. I'll, do, um, I'll say a bit of, about that later. Curriculum management at school and then the collaborative education by sharing educational goals. So basically when the teachers try to do curriculum management or try to design the curriculum, they think of what should the students will be able to do, um, how would they learn it and what to learn, which is same as what we have in the Philippines. But what do we mean? How do we describe deep active learning? So one is that the students should be able to take initiative towards their own learning. So the curriculum should be designed so that they would be interested. They would associate what they're learning with their own future career. They would able to be, they should be able to face problems with a positive perspective and reflect on their own learning. So the teachers are asked to reflect, the students are also asked to reflect. Deep active learning also is described here to be interactive learning wherein the students will be able to deepen their thinking as they collaborate to each other, with each other. So, yung idea ko, makarinig ako ng isa. So, meron akong idea A, narinig ko yung idea B. My next idea because of that would be A plus B. It's also ways alpha plus the others. Um, and deep learning also means that they will be able to solve problems, form their own ideas and create this, um, they would be able to do this by utilizing now the content from each subjects. So basic education in Japan is basically nine years long. High school is not part of compulsory education, although 99%, 90% would continue to high school or some special as, um, specialized schools. But what is important here, what I really want to show you, oops, sorry, is this part. The attached schools of national universities are expected to implement research on educational issues to be models for local public schools. Local public schools at the same time also design their own curriculum. So yung nangyayari na revision of the curriculum or course of study by the Ministry of Education, ang pinaka-basis po nun is nanggagaling sa mga practices ng teachers. Dun sa research na ginagawa ng teachers in school. So in this way, the teachers actually do research. They publish the kind of actions research, action researches that they do. They, and in, in return, it gives the teachers a voice, a voice to the curriculum. And when you give the teachers voices to the curriculum, the students are also given a voice. And how was that possi made possible? That's all made possible by the um, most prominent school-based professional development program they have here, which is lesson study. May I just know who among you have heard of lesson study na po? Can you please just type it in the chat box if you've heard of it? Para lang may idea ko. Sabi nyo lang yes, or if you can react. Gamitin po natin yung reactions. Have you heard of lesson study? Ah, okay. So may mga nag yes Thank you so much po. Ma'am Ma Shirley, okay na po yung boses po? Yes, yes po. Thank you po. So basically, um, lesson study dates back in the Meiji era, that era that is before the 1990s pa. The idea of that is we all visit the classroom as teachers and then we learn from it. So that eh, parang yung Spanish time sa atin, na they learn, the commoners would learn from the church, from the terracoya. And then even during that time, they're doing lesson study, which is basically the teachers go and observe the class and then learn from each other's experiences. Um, right now, before, after the war, lalo na, ginagamit na lang lesson study, this kind of collaborative research among teachers to be able to um, create manuals for them to be able to um, improve on the content. But right now, it has been evolving to recreating the curriculum from the teachers being trained for technical proficiency to teachers being reflective practitioners. May nakita ko nag-know. Magbibigay pa ako ng introduction of lesson study. 
Okay, so um, lesson study is now being embraced all over the world. Um, in the Philippines, we have the Philippine Association for Learning and Lesson Study that was launched two years ago. Um, but basically, in different parts of the world right now, they're looking at lesson study because they were looking at Japan. Bakit laging mataas yung score ng Japan? Kahit yung content ng PISA ay halos a little more than 50% lang nung inaaral ng mga bata dito sa Japan. And why are the teachers very comfortable working with each other? So in the latest um, reports also of OECD, they actually have mentioned lesson study a lot of times, saying that it's a collaborative action research approach which aims to improve the effectiveness of student learning by enhancing teachers' professional competence. So a common theme of all those, you don't worry, I, I can just share you to you my slides, pero po, basically what is this lesson or learning study? Um, it's a professional development inquiry, some would call it a program, framework, or school-based research, that the main goal is to enhance teachers' professional capital through classroom-based joint construction of knowledge. So that in the end, pag gumaling si teacher, makakapaggawa ng mas magandang klase, mas quality classes, mas gagaling yung mga bata. That's... So the idea there is you have a group of teachers, collaborative action research. You have a group of teachers planning for a lesson and then they go and observe the lesson. Afterwards, they reflect on it by giving each other feedback. And then afterwards, yung next naman. Or for the others, pwede nilang after the reflection dahil merong mga iba't ibang sub hawak silang sections. So ulitin mo yung same class but with the improvements. So it has been evolving from isang lesson lang to, for example, the US, they have adapted it from the PDCA, Plan, Do, Check, Act approach to study, plan, conduct, reflect. Let's study the curriculum. Let's try to check alin yung mahirap pituro. Let's plan a lesson on that together. Let's conduct the lesson and then we reflect on it. So basically, that's lesson study po. You really study about the lesson. But hindi lang yung lesson na content. But what we mean by lesson here is all the dynamics and interactions happening in the classroom. So it has been, there are a lot of adaptations outside Japan. For example, the one you see here. This is the Philippines lesson study. Um... Pioneer Framework, done by Nismed. This one, Lesson Research Net, this is from the US. And then Australia naman. Ang take ng Australia is, you plan the lesson. The next phase is, you observe after observation, you have a post-lesson discussion, and then you have a second observation. And then final discussion, final reflections of the teachers. This one is learning study from yun naman yung tinatawag na mga taga-UK, more or less when you go to Europe, instead of lesson study, they call it learning study. Kasi nga yung notion na lesson, yung content yung tinitingnan mo. So sa kanila, dahil okay na yung content namin, na pinag-aralan yan, we wanna see the learning. So ang ginagawa naman nila doon, ang variation nila is, group of teachers plan together, they observe, and then they interview some students afterwards they have a post-lesson discussion. Then they have, they interview another set of students based on the reflection. And then they teach again and then observe. And then uh, they teach, observe, interview students, and then go for a final um, reflection. But here where I am from, again, I would, again, po, Ang bawat school, depending on their research theme, depending on their what's this, resources, they can tweak that PDCA approach. Kami dito, we call it reflective lesson study. And we don't just focus on one lesson. Rather, we look at the longitudinal development of the lesson, of the learning of the students and the teacher. So, kunari, yung ditong design, practice, reflect, you construct. You design the whole curriculum, you try to look into, the, you do that one, you reflect on it based on the reflection, how do you now reconstruct the design curriculum? So, we just don't look at one lesson, but a series of lessons to create that bigger picture of the curriculum. So here, the teachers are able to keep track of this long span and continuous long 
learning trajectory. Okay, good. Too much words. But basically, the, the teachers would need to study not just that one day lesson, but rather how, does, how do these lessons evolve from each other? And to be able to support that, ito yung wala pa po ngayon sa literature when it comes to lesson study really, is the idea of writing, reading, and sharing of reflective practice records. So basically, yung kaninang sinishare ko, di ba? They plan, they do, they act, PDC. check, and then act. Tapos, normally, natatapos na doon. Lalo na yung mga adaptations sa outside Japan. But here, after that, the, the teachers have to write about it in the form of practice records. So I will just share with you one um, model of practice records. So what is a practice record? Basically, it's the result of the teacher's close and in-depth inquiry of one's practice. Um, the idea there is it's a product of discussions of actual classroom practices and then reflections. So in this practice records, the teachers are actually able to share what the students are learning and how the students are learning and how they are also learning as professionals. So what do Japanese teachers write after lesson study? So um, please do check the chat again because I've uploaded a file and I would want us to actually read through it. I mean, but before that, What's the significance, at least for us also, of reading practice records? Because before you write, um, I would want you to go through that experience of reading one. Um, the purpose of reading a practice record is not to quickly finish or say, find an immediate usable knowledge. The idea first of us reading right now, I want you to look into the structure of the inquiry process narrated by the teacher writer. And then from there, try to look for what is the meaning of the action research, of the research that was done by the teacher. Okay, so let's try to follow the development of the inquiry by carefully reading the text. Um, when we speak of reflective practice records, um, basically it's very important for Japanese teachers because through writing, reading, sharing of reflective practice records, they are able to, we say here, cultivate their own competencies as teachers and competence on inquiry-based learning. Kasi kung ang expectation dito is the teacher should be able to design lessons that would make the students inquire. So sila rin as teachers, we need to inquire our own practices so we experience what we're teaching. And um, reading of practice records actually is an efficient method to learn from each other's experiences. Kasi nga dito sa Japan, very strict na hindi sila basta-basta nakakalabas. Kapag school day, hindi sila pwede lang magsabi na hindi may conference po, so absent ako. Um, dito ang conferences, usually Saturday, Sunday, tapos during summer break, winter break, autumn break, ganun siya. So this reflective practice records and its reading is an efficient method actually to learn from each other kasi nga nakasulat, nakapublish siya. So they don't have to go out. Less resources are needed. It could be done anywhere. So for one of the schools I, I am working with, meron lang PDF folder lahat. Tapos kahit saan, kahit habang nasa train, pwede kang magbasa. So as you read about another person's practice, it actually adds to your own repertoire of your own um, professional practice. It also supports professional learning activities. Bakit mamaya i-discuss po natin? Um, it's also, it also supports student-centered learning. Um, kasi nga, ang pinaka nakasulat dun sa action research, sa practice records, are what the students are doing. So as you read through that, the teacher gets to understand the inquiry that's taking place. And so as a teacher who reads it, it also challenges you to do the same thing inside your classroom, thus supporting that kind of inquiry among your students. Um, it's an avenue for individual and collaborative professional development. Okay, Paul. so I would want to spend around 10 minutes you don't have to finish the whole thing, but please, please try to read first the file that I've uploaded. 
and then try to write some memos. You can either do a handwritten one or you can type sa chat box yung mga ideas na pumapasok po sa inyo as you are reading it. So please, I will put the file here again, download, and I'll pause for 10 minutes so that you can read it too. Open. It's an excerpt of one of the practice records. Sorry po, math yung nilagay ko dyan. Kasi mas madali sa akin explain yung math. But we do have for other subjects as well. Um, next time, I could, I, I'll be very happy to share some others, uh, other subjects other than the math. Pero madali lang kung basahin to. Even for the non-math majors. So yeah, 10 minutes. A few moments later. Okay, I know we're not yet done reading, but at least you can you have the file already, so you can just continue it later. But if you have any reactions or some things you're thinking about when you were reading it, please please type it box the chat box. Okay. And share Um, any comments po on what you have read? Anything you noticed? Paano siya isinulat? Or how the teacher was thinking? How the students were thinking? So these are some of the examples. But you're, you're free to just write it was a chat box. Ha? I'd really, really appreciate if you can write some of your comments there. Um, so... Basically, this is very important. It's an avenue for individual and collaborative professional reflection here in Japan because um, teachers can read it when they're alone. They can read it with their colleagues, with their friends. They can read it with a group like what I'm doing right now. So whenever we do have so whenever we do have workshops or trainings for the teachers, we start with reading practice records. Um, they can read it when they're in school. We use it during our trainings. And then this reading actually the understanding part leads to reflection in all this one. So um, we might not have the time to hear everyone out, but please through, um, later on continue reading it and share with me some ideas you got from it. But um, when I use this material also with um, during my trainings, for example, in Singapore, in Africa, these are some of the ideas, some of the things that I actually heard from the participants. For example, um, they would give comments on the activities that there was inquiry and investigation in that practice record. They were able to read how the teacher and the students are expressing themselves and how the activities are actually making the students reflect. Um, there was active participation. There was repetition of a lot of things in there. In terms of the students, the students appear to be curious, confident, critical. They were critically thinking. They were reflecting and discussing among themselves. And then the teacher at the, the, the first part actually introduced a grand design of what the unit would be like. What was he thinking? Why was he thinking like this? So it was very, very clear. Um, teacher was taking note if you read through it Oh, kahit hindi pa po kayo tapos dun sa first part lang or browse over it, makikita nyo may S1, S2. Ano yung mga sinasabi ng mga bata? So the teacher was actually taking note of, if not everyone, at least some of the students. The teacher was supporting the students and then some of them feel like it was tailored. The whole activity was tailored towards students' abilities. Um, so whenever we read the practice records like this, those that are written by the teachers. Um, we try to follow the longitudinal process of learning that took place. More than, ano yung ginawa ni teacher? Para ma-imagine mo kung ano yung ginawa ni teacher at paano si teacher nag -iisip. We try to look at paano ba natuto yung mga bata? What have they learned? And how do we know this? So for example, for this particular um, practice records, you'd notice that the main material was the, this sentences. And then it was, it, it was used to actually initiate discussions among students. Some of the question was, is this really math? Um, the students were asking, there are different kinds of sushi. So what do you mean by this? 
So we were reading through the flow of students thinking from discussion and then they, their discussion went to what does always hold true mean again? And from there, they were giving some counter examples to be able to, uh, for the math teachers, uh, I'm sure you're, you can understand that this is a very important statement for us, like always hold true mean. So to be able to really grasp that mathematical concept, they were giving counter examples. They were now asking and revisiting some of the mathematical terms that they knew from before. And then from there, the students were able to give clear definitions. And then what are these clear definitions again? Why are they needed? Because they support statements. So which one now are mathematical statements or statements that always hold true? So the students thinking discussion continued and you'd notice that the teacher was actually recording it. So what are these counter examples that the students were giving? The teachers was also taking photo of these different ideas. It's not necessarily just during the class, but might have taken the photo when the student submitted the paper to him. And you would notice here also the teacher had actually written down now some conversations that had transpired. As a reader, it would allow me to have my own interpretation. And then at the same time, one of the most important thing here, and if you think of action research, this is data. Yeah. Um, is that we are able to actually document what are the, the students' conceptions? Pwede siyang misconception, pero when we do curriculum design, what is very important now is we, under, we start from where the students are. So when the teachers are, are trying to do a research about their own class, they have to always base it on what the, on the students, on what the students are thinking, what the students are saying. Diba? As teachers, it's normally, ganito ko siya natutunan eh, ganito ko siya iniisip. I'm a math teacher, I love math, but how I perceive math is not necessarily the same as how those who are struggling with math are thinking about it. So I need to be able to understand their perspectives as well as teachers. So ito yon. habang sinusulat mo yan and mababasa siya ng next teacher, ng next teacher, hindi na kailangan ma-experience ng teacher itong gantong ideas from the students, but they could already imagine the thinking processes of the, of the students. And so from there, you'd notice that the learning story was how can we experience things that always hold true? The students started linking the properties of integers and figures, and then, then they went to actual mathematical example. So from there, the ideas, the discussions of the students had transformed from the statements given to actually Euclidean geometry. I will not go through the math of this, but you would see the progress of the thinking of the students and the progress of the lesson from the practice records written by the teacher. So these kinds of practice records cannot be written before. Kasi ang masusulat lang natin is ano ba yung module? Paano mo din assign yung module? But what is normally missing and lacking and why we want teachers to do action research is teachers writing down now what actually had transpired inside the classroom. So by just reading this from a math teacher perspective, you could, I could see the interconnection of the math topics which led to mathematical argumentation, which was the one of the main goals of the teacher. There was individual and group thinking and a lot of reflections. And even in the first three pages, you would see already that the teacher wrote like, I was surprised when the student said this, so I thought. So the teacher was reflecting on his own reflection when he was in the classroom. There were multiple levels of sharing and thinking. Um, there was a building on fami from familiar objects to mathematical proofs. And then the teachers were, the teacher listening closely to the students so that he will be able to connect. So when we think of the process of the mathematical learning in that practice record, I can summarize it like this. So the students started from they were given familiar statements and then they were asked to how to redefine the task on hand 
in the discussion. We can read through that. How to redefine the task discussion. And then they were presenting counterexamples. Now from the counterexamples, again, they went back to the statements that was given to them that has no counterexamples, which one. And then continue the process of inquiry among the students. So um, one of the things that's very important for us in curriculum management and teacher learning and action teachers action research actually is that um, we see learning as a long spiral cycle of inquiry where and we start with either kahit pa tumapat, student learning or teacher training teacher learning or sa action research mismo it always starts with these themes that would engage or identify ideas that you would want to further dwell on. And then the teachers, the students would be given time to plan, strategize, and action. Now, do activities so that they can construct the new perspectives or new perspectives, present their ideas, reflect, which this reflection leads to the next team setting. And ito na yung pinaka laging dinidiscuss sa dito sa charm. If you start from somewhere, you try to do it, you analyze, you present, you reflect on it. That reflection has to be a starting point of the next cycle of inquiry. So um, when we speak of inquiry learning, this goes through for both teachers and students. The past experiences are always integrated to the new ones. That's why as I am talking right now, I am trying to think that you you because you read it then the, the the your own experiences as a teacher what you have read and then what i will say could hopefully eventually lead to some new ideas for you in the future um very important in inquiry based learning for us is that the students should be able to experience and communicate their own experiences and listen to each other so i think it's the same as the short video clip that i showed you so kahit ibang class to ibang grade level ibang subject the structure of inquiry-based learning, inquiry thinking is similar. So on reading practice records, it's very important for us to share and read practice records because um, as we read them, we are also able to articulate our own practice. So parang nakita natin yung progress ng thinking ng mga bata. That was how the learning structure looks like, looked like. Yung sa loob ng classroom ko, ano nga bang ginagawa ko? Ano yung general structure na meron ako? And then also, as we read through it also, it makes us, you know, think of what aspects of these things that we had read could be modified or applied to my own practice. Or I could think of, hindi, ayoko niyan. Then it would start now another, uh, it would spark a new idea on what you can do and what you would want to do in your own classroom. As we read practice records here also, it's an avenue for reflection, really. How do you integrate the reading to your own practice? What aspects of that reading, read material can contribute to your own future prospect of your own practice? So the idea here is we read reflective practice records. It's the same as being able to read student cycle of learning in the classroom, but now, you'd notice that the teacher had written actual conversations from the students. So to be able to write a practice records like this, now another important skill is actually observation. So I won't be able to discuss that one. What are the necessary skills in observing? Because this is a totally different workshop. But what now I would want to jump on to is what are the different components of reflective practice records? I know you have just read the first part, but basically it's comprised of three things, the design, the learning story, and then the reflection. If you think of it on a more academic term, it would be like the introduction and the methodology or the approach or the instrumentation and then the discussion results, and then your conclusion. But because this is a practice-based school-based action research, the conclusion is not something that is generative or summative, but rather it should lead to the next cycle of the action research. So when we 
look into when we um, analyze what are the things that teachers had written in the design part, it includes the goal coming from the Ministry of Education or the goals of the school or the teacher. What are the materials being used? Why are those the materials being used? What is the design of the learning, not just for one lesson, but the longitudinal design of the curriculum? How is the learning going to be constructed? And then in the... So, Tayo, sinusulat natin to eh, more or less, kapag nagsusulat tayo ng module. Ang nangyayari lang po talaga minsan is natatapos na doon. So, what makes it different? And katulad nung ginagawa sa action research, you also narrate what had happened. So here, depending on the class, depending on the style of the teacher, there are different kinds of possible na narrations. But what we focus on here really is the narration should include giving students a voice. That means we hear, we listen to the students. That's why lesson study is very important. The observers are very important because for some time that the teacher is not being able to listen to the student, the other teachers could actually write this for you. So whatever the observations of the other teachers are, it automatically goes to the teachers as well. With my project right now, the online lesson study, it's well, a bit easier right now because you could always just record what had happened. So when you start writing your practice record, then you could always go back to the video and pick up the actual conversations that the students had. Or in the chat box, you could just save it and you know put it down later on. The most difficult part, even for the Japanese, of this practice records is writing down the reflection. Saying that this is what had happened is one, but how do you now make sense of what had happened and connect it to your next lesson, to your next unit, or to your next year of teaching is something that entails a very deep reflection. And this is why you also, we also read together so that even just this one practice record, we could already talk about how do you interpret the, the, the narration of the story. So you also help the teacher to actually reflect on his own um, uh, class. So the design may include the goals, materials, design, and construction of the learning unit. Now, what I would want to share with you is a class that we had in um, Uganda just earlier this year, March, bago kami maban totally. Um, so we are also training them part of their lesson study endeavors is how to write practice records. So we all went to a class together and then afterwards we had to go through how do we now write that class and transform it into a practice record. So basically we start with what do you write in the design again, the goals, the materials, the general design, the rationale behind it and the construction of the learning unit. So we were looking at you could probably write your planned flow and content. What is the nature of the content? What are the mathematical concepts? But how are you also relating it to um, students' experiences? And then while there, they wanted to do to make fun, to make math fun, and at the same, the students be able to connect it to real life. So you could also write about it. How do you expect the students to interact and communicate? So these are all in the design part. So you'd notice, para siyang theoretic, a conceptual framework talaga of your own action research. And then, what, what are the opportunities for teacher support or for teacher also supporting the students? What is it in that plan? So when they were transforming this class that we were able to observe to practice records, these are some of the things that we were able to come up with. And then the next part of the practice record is the narration. The inquiry stories of the practice or the learning unit which manifests to show the processes of thinking and learning. So, for example, because there were a lot of us observing also, for this one is my own observation. So I was just following this particular group. These are, the these are the students, what were they saying, how were they communicating, interacting, and then mahilig kami dito magsulat. Um, mahilig kami dun sa maraming color ng pens. You know, we always have that. And for example, para sa akin, the red one is what my suggestions are to the teacher. 
the the black one is what the teacher had said for example the blue one is what the students have said so that when i give it to the teacher more or less i am also assisting the teacher in writing down a narration of the learning story so yeah that's the particular group and then we were sharing now what were some of the conversations this is an important part of the narration of the story so for example this part over here is actually what's written there and then this one is from the initial discussion how has it changed Oops. and so the story then we tried now comparing what are the different ideas of the different groups how has their activity their thinking progress over that one no, it was 90 minutes actually those 90 minutes and then from there we now have to sit down and think of how do we make sense of what had happened so when we write of reflections um it's really writing about attain perspectives, what are newfound issues. So yun nga eh, kasi yung reflection has to be connected to the next cycle of the research. And ano yung hindi pa nagagawa? So it's realistic in the, inside the classroom, it's realistic to write this inside your schools because hindi siya conclusive at all. What are some of the foresights derived from the analysis and reflection in and action? So for this particular class, these were some of the things that our group had reflected on that we had shared with the teachers. So there was a smooth transition from one cycle. Students had multiple chances to discuss and experience connected activities that build on each other. Grab it, 100 students to in a class in Uganda. But yeah, so these were some of the ideas, this part. How do you now categorize it for the reflection point? There was hands-on, minds-on, so some of the ideas. So one theme for the reflection could be student interaction. These were, again, some of the ideas. One theme for the reflection is your construction of concepts. Okay, so again, these are the main components of one model of practice records. Teachers have to write the design, the story, the reflection part. And then, ito na yung question ngayon. <laughs> Parang hindi ko po yan kayang gawin sa lahat ng units ko. Which is true. Here in Japan, they don't write practice records sa lahat ng units. Again, this is a very slow but sure and deep approach to teacher learning and also material development. Because imagine, if there are 20 of you teachers in the school, each one of you produces one practice record every year. Then in a couple of years' time, ang dami nyo na nasulat. By then. So this is an example of an annual reflective lesson study cycle in one of the schools that I'm working with, the attached school of the University of Fukui. We start in April, we end in March, but we do have some um, breaks in between. So by April, basically the teachers, the, the, the previous written reflective practice records, they would sit down during their weekly meeting. And we do have that in the Philippines now, the LAC. They would read the practice records from there. They would discuss, think of what would be our research theme, our lessons at research theme, and then design a lesson that they would open by June, perhaps a 20-session lesson, a five-session lesson, one whole unit. And then from there, they would, by July, because this is now testing time, and then July, no, August is summer vacation. So end of July, magaan yung mga teacher, that's when they would start now writing the narration. So notice that here, as they designed the lesson for the June that they would open, this is the design part of the practice record. Then they have the June, they did the practice, they get feedback, so they write it down by August. During the break, they will just have one or two days come together. They read through their reflective practice records in groups. And this is when the teacher's reflection is deepened by the feedback that he gets or she gets from others. And then from there, they, they again redesign the lesson, open, a big open lesson study in November. And then do the writing and reading of reflective practice records from December all the way to March. 
So, yan po yung cycle. So, very important that the teachers are given time to write. Hindi siya pwedeng write at your own free time. It's part of the cycle of the school, yung action research. Because, again, as teachers write, read, and share practice records, then it also supports their own um, growth. 12.20. I want to pause for some questions. Because I'm almost done. I guess I'll finish in about 10 minutes. And then I'll open the floor for questions. So one of the first projects that I did in adapting, bringing in reflective practice records to the Philippines the Philippines was with teachers from Lipa City in Batangas, where I'm from. So basically, um, iba shock, we notify. I'll be very happy to give you a copy of the paper of this. But basically, we had to go through some workshops because to be able to do lesson study, write reflective practice records, you need we need some more skills like observation and really how do we read and listen to the students. One of the things I've noticed, which was sad that well, it was just in during the first few weeks. Was for example, we would invite some admin. They would come to the class. Pag nag pag nagsasalita si teacher, andun sila. Pag nag start na yung group work ng mga bata, dun lumalabas yung mga observers. Parang ah, wala naman kami yung observer. Parang no, 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 no. Okay, kalang na wala habang nagsasalita si teacher. Pero pag yung mga bata nag start na magwork, that's where we should be because that's the main data for the practice records. You know. And then, so these were some of the mindsets that we had to change. That's why for the learning design, we started August. And then that August, the teachers opened their classes September, October. We used November, December for writing reflections. We made use of the learning action cells so that they actually have time to sit down and write. Otherwise, the teachers are super duper busy that only those who are taking their masters would you know go out of their way to write down so yung mga nagma-masters na teachers naman they were very happy because now they have an action research a starting point for their own master of thesis for the others who just want to really improve then they would they were they were doing it with us one difference is here in japan we take things really slow. So one practice record or two practice records per year for teachers is fine. I know that for some of the Filipinos, they would want, some would want to write as many as much as possible. So yeah, this is how we had modified. it. But just to give you an idea of what are some of the things that they wrote about um, in the analysis. As a researcher, what I do now is I analyze what the teachers had written. So the teachers, action research practice records focus on analyzing the students and their own selves i focus on analyzing now the teachers because i'm a teacher educator but what have they written in the learning design they were really um, articulating the student learning and interactions the teacher their own expectations as teachers what were they anticipating which was very important writing down your own anticipation is very important for the reflection part because then they had to write take lang hindi nangyari to bakit so it's a very good start of reflection also. The content and the curriculum, this is what was expected. This is what was what is written from DepEd. Pero ganito ko siya tweenik. I even had a teacher who actually wrote that I followed the module that was given, but then it wasn't working for my students. So I had to add this, this, and this. So the other teachers she was working with are getting some ideas na ah, ganito natin pwedeng itweak, i-remodel. Ngayon yung pinaka um, module that we received from Japan and the learning environment and resources. So I chose a very big school, a public school to work with. And this is a school na wala halos resources just to also check if it's possible really in the Philippines. So ganyan yung itsura. Oops, nakawalan pala. Then this is an example of the learning story. So again, we had to focus on the kids. So you would see here. Um, they were writing about the progress and struggles of individual and groups of students during the learning, some changes and turning points of the learning design, context and complex of the learning situation, and how the everyday classes had led to a bigger picture of the learning of the students. And here, um, it's fine to add pictures. It's a very good starting point, actually, of writing learning story to add in pictures. Because hindi tayo sana lahat magsulat ng kung ano nangyayari sa mga bata. And sometimes, as a teacher in the classroom, you could just take photos and think about it later on. So, 
And then for the reflection part, um, yeah, it's interesting because now they were internalizing, trying to make sense of what had happened by looking at ano ba yung nire-reflect nila before tapos ano yung ex- anticipated answers nila kaso ganito yung nangyari. So they were now trying to um, think of bakit ganun yung actions nila as teachers? Bakit ganito yung actions sa mga estudyante? Okay, in, as I design now my next lesson or my next unit, these are some of the things that I want to add up. For example, this particular teacher um, was thinking of problem-structured approach in her class. And then in the reflection part, she was able to redefine problem-structured approach for her own students. So that's what she had written. So this is an example, the transformation of classes over a year because we run this project for a year and a half. So this is how the classes used to look like. And then eventually, the teachers also, for example, in this picture, there are three teachers in one classroom now. So as the teachers were collaborating and inquiring, they were supporting each other. They were also supporting their students. At one point, the students started asking, bakit wala pong nag-observe today? Bakit walang nanonood sa amin? So <laughs> the, the students, at first, nagtatanong sila, no, parang, bakit may mga tao? And then eventually, they get used to it after a month. So yung teacher then, nung una parang, hindi ako magagalit kasi may ibang tao. But, you know, as you do this more often, you get used to it that it becomes so natural. Ganun din naman po dito sa Japan. The new teachers are scared whenever there are other teachers giving comments. But eventually, and plus one is it's collaborative in a way na dahil nabasa niyo yung plan ko bago ko siya ginawa, hindi niyo pwedeng sabihin na mali ako lang. Kasi you were given the chance to also react on it. So... Kaya mas nangyayari ngayon is nagle-level lahat ng teacher in the same ground. So the idea here is writing practice record creates professional knowledge. And it's also being mobilized now because we're reading, writing, sharing it. And um, this mobilization, creation and mobilization of knowledge is based on students learning, achieved through co-inquiry and documentation. So the idea there is really the teacher starts looking into listening to what are the students really saying? What are their ideas? What kind of conversations are they having? What are their failures? So ito yung nagiging data ng action research na embedded dun sa writing of reflective practice records. So the teacher is actually after going through that one year of writing practice records, they were able to define now what is the essence of that practice records for themselves as a group. So it's an account and specification of the curriculum which follows student learning by studying the learning holistically and over a long period of time. So from the structure, they were, the teacher said that they were able to, dis, to better design learning tailored for their own students' background, interests, and abilities. Um, they were able to gain a better and more evidence-based picture of the learning that took place. This is very important because when we did this, this was also the time that RPMS, for those who are teaching in public schools, um, was introduced. And so because they had their practice records, hindi sila nahirapan sa RPMS kasi lahat ng MOVs are, ay nandun na sa RPMS. And um, during the observation, when we opened the classes, we also had invited some of the admin so that they were able to support na, ah, okay, kahit hindi nila sundin yung RPMS, um, what's this? Parang work guidelines, okay lang kasi yung lahat naman na nandun is present dun sa practice record. So, nangyayari, yung RPMS is just for evaluation. But the practice records that they were, they were able to produce reflects their own capacity really as teachers. Kasi, minsan yung naisip namin, kawawa yung mga teachers kasi i-evaluate kasi isang araw ng pagtuturo mo lang. It could be your worst day ever. But here, by reading two practice records, you're also really able to dig deeper into how is the teacher constructing classes? How is the teacher supporting the students? How is the teacher really designing and making sense of the learning? So why should teachers write about their practices regularly? As a teacher, as a practitioner, it would help you to do self-reflection. And personally, it's a contribution to others also. Again, by sharing this, you're actually 
for example, those who hasn't taught this before or will be teaching it, instead of them starting from scratch, you're already giving them a material that mo more than just the module is, paano ba implement tong module na to? For the readers, um, it provides hint for future practices for their own self-reflection, and they are able to gain teaching experiences beyond their own practice because we have so much to do already every day na parang hindi mo may experience lahat yan so through practice records teachers can learn from each other sustainability um we do read practice records here na yung sinulat ng mga bata yung sinulat ng mga veteran teachers you know as you read this you actually mobilize learning also from practice. And then transfer, well, this is us in at the University of Fukui Department of Professional Development of Teachers. We believe that by asking, giving teachers a voice of their own practice, we, are, we will be able to transform educational research. As a university lecturer, this researcher, this is what I research about. But I can, but I, what I do can support also teachers researching about what they can research. Because yung mga, for example, an analysis of say the practice records written by ten teachers. Hindi teachers ang gagawa nun. That's our job. No, ano yung kaya ng research at dapat ini research ng teachers which are meaningful for them. This is now that practice records. And we say that by actually in this practice records, teachers are be are being able to connect their daily experiences. By doing so and sharing them in a written form, the teachers are able to grasp the depth of their professional artistry, their own professional capability, and improve subsequent practices. I'm not a linguist or a language education major, but I think our language educators could attest that there is value behind putting down all your ideas into words. Kai Vygotsky, yeah, I think that was Vygotsky, who also said that we developed our language through interactions. And actually, as we try to express our ideas, we try to look for not just the words that would be appropriate, but we now try to consider the listeners also. So as we write our practice records, yes, we put down into writing what had, transform, what had transpired inside our classroom, also while considering the readers themselves. And then by writing this practice records about by writing student teacher learning stories in teacher in teacher learning, we involve the students in creating a meta system for educational reform and teacher learning. So for me, per, um, because this is part of my research, I do research on practice records. And that's also because my data and analysis right now leads to really the practice records is a means of cultivating teachers professional capital I'm using the definition of higher gifts and full and for professional capital wherein it's a function of the human so social and decisional capital as teachers go through the writing of practice records embedded in that lesson study they are able to have a grasp of their own human capital ano ba yung kaya kong gawin? because it is lesson study it also cultivates their um, cap, their social capitals, their ability to be able to connect to others, to collaborate with their peers. And then as they write, reflect about it, they go back to how are they deciding in practice, so which is their decisional capitals. So I would want to end with one of my favorite um, quotes from John Dewey. I'm a fan of John Dewey. The more a teacher is aware of the past experiences of students, of their hopes, desires, chief interests, the better that the teacher will understand the forces at work that needs to be there, that need to be directed and utilized for the formation of reflective habits. I think um, a 2030 teacher, the next generation teacher is a reflective teacher. And our reflection as teachers begins from understanding our own students. That I would want to say. Maraming salamat po. Domo arigato gozaimashita. And for the others with questions, that's my email address. Salamat po. Ooh, okay, let's give Pauline or Patrice. Uh, okay. You can do it.
Actually, I'm a math, a math major, as you may know. <laughs> okay, but I really appreciate your talk. So, talagang nakikinig ako because, you know, uh, nabibilang lang yung lectures na naiintindihan ko about math. Okay, so I really enjoyed your, your, your lecture. That was really brilliant. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. So at this point, we now open the floor uh, for your questions, although there are already some, um, yep, some who have typed in their questions here. You might want to access also the chat box, uh, Patrice. There's one from Chanilo Saldon. See, Sir Chanilo, a regular charmer namin siya. Okay, hi, Sir Chanilo. Okay, and looks like, yep, he's very interested to collaborate with you and, you know, for you. And, and he's actually inviting you. Would you like me to read? I don't know if you can access the chat box. So hi, Mom Pauline. I'm teaching pre-calculus in senior high school. Pre-calculus in senior high school. Yes. Just from narinig ko lang si calculus na nginig na ako. Okay, I'm exploring the possibility if we can ask you to be guest lecturer to my cross-cultural virtual classroom. That sounds so interesting. In which you can give lecture or demo teaching as, a, as an outreach to my students. If possible, we can join our students together and have breakout sessions to them to interact. I wish to discuss the project with you. Thank you. Sir, uh, Chonilo, I mean, if you can uh, turn on your video and uh, yeah, we'll call on you and you can, you know, uh, discuss your uh, suggestion with uh, Patrice live. Sir Chonilo, would you like to unmute your mic? Please, if you can unmute the mic of Sir Chonilo. Yeah, that's, that's, that's very interesting. Sounds like Sir Chanilo. Ayan. Hi, Ayan. Sir Chanilo. Yep. Okay. Uh, you can unmute your mic. Okay, go. Sir, you can ask Miss Patrice uh, what you just said. <laughs> Hi, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Hi, ma'am Shirley also. Ma'am, I work, I am uh, maximizing the, um, the, what we call the distance education that we have right now. So, I have laid out some plans with regards to my uh, pre-calculus class. And actually, one of the things in the pipeline is actually the cross-cultural classroom. So I am in the process of collaborating uh, teachers from uh, other institutions, whether in the Philippines or abroad, such that the student, we can have synchronous session, if possible, with your students and my students, and then have um, activities with them in which they can uh, interact together. Um, uh, this, this activity shall provide uh, good uh, cultural exchange you know, with the students. So I hope you can, uh, we can talk, we can discuss about this if possible. Thanks, ma'am. Oh, that would be very good. Um, I had put my um, email address because we also do this one so if we can connect them to some students also here in Japan or some of our partners students who's also from abroad from Myanmar, uh, Uganda, Malawi, Guatemala, sige lang po. That would, that would, wow. That's mm -hmm. good, ma'am. Thank you. The thing about, you know, uh, attending our online lectures, okay, it actually opens uh, uh, Doors to a lot of possibilities and a lot of opportunities. Okay, thank you, Patrice. That's all right. So you really, That's all right. Okay. For the chart. Mm -hmm. uh, any more questions? So watch out for Miss Patrice for Arrow 2021. She has already promised to come, Kahit. Uh, I don't know if it's going to be totally digital, but yeah. She'd probably be giving um, um, a workshop. Okay, I've uh, seen her. Uh, give a workshop in Agusan and it's really, you know, parang very engaging, okay? So we are looking forward to that uh, workshop by uh, Patrice in Aral 2021, okay? Napakaswerte ng ating mga math majors. Ang gagaling ng kanilang mga speakers at math and science majors, okay? So far, we, parang isa pa lang uh, aming English, but I'm also looking for more English uh, ARs, okay? But for physics, science, and math, ang gagaling ng mga speakers nila. <laughs> That's all right. Okay. Thank you. That's Do we have more right. questions here? Puro amazing. Ang kanalang sinasabi, amazing, amazing. Yep. Okay. Uh, we're opening the floor to more questions. If you have anything in mind, okay, just thoughts, ideas, probably. 
Miss Shirley, ma Ma'am Shirley. Yep, yes, yes, uh, there is, no? Opo, uh, Miss Pauline, Hello. congratulations. Uh, Dennis, hindi ka masyadong blue today, ha? Hello, yes, hindi masyado. <laughs> Oo nga, <laughs> nagkataon. <laughs> Opo. <laughs> so, I have a question to Miss Pauline. Um, kasi, unlike in the Philippines, um, we have what we call a centralized curriculum. So sometimes when we have centralized curriculum, we, we try to cover a certain condition that um, our students may have developed a certain content, skills, and attitude. Um, unlike in Japan, uh, your curriculum is, sabi mo kanina, autonomous, no? So do you think um, having autonomous education could actually make an impact in terms of developing or enriching the teaching practice? Mm -hmm. Ah, thank you so much. That's a very important question. Actually, po, um, we do have a centralized curriculum, but it's autonomous in a way on how do you interpret it. So at the end of the day, kailangan maturo pa rin po nila lahat dito. So what the Ministry of Education does is, like sa Singapore, they provide the textbook, they provide suggested teaching materials. Like in the Philippines, we have the teaching manuals, learner guides, or balikan. Um, so meron din kami dito. So normally, yung mga bago-bagong teacher susundan nila yon, but eventually, because as they write and go through this practice-based research, they learn how to tweak and redesign the curriculum. I guess yun yung dapat um ma medyo mabago sa atin na yes we can follow, we should follow what the deputy is giving us, but you teachers are the experts of your own classroom. So. Alin dito sa prescript, prescribed or prescription suggestion sa inyo ang pwede nyo i-pick up gamitin and then you redesign your curriculum. And when we do redesign, syempre we still cover everything. Doon papasok po yung curriculum management. I don't know if I answered your question. But I think if you just imagine kung paano yung, yung thinking process na you read your students, you pick up what can be used, what is necessary, and redesign. That already entails very deep professional capital from the teachers. And as you go through that process, I think it empowers and develops teachers' competencies. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because what, what I like about action research, lesson study, it's really empowering. Um, and sometimes, I, I have mentioned this already in my previous talk in Charm then, um, sometimes policy, educational policy in a context of curriculum textbook module or whatsoever can induce oppression. You know? And um, this oppression sometimes can limit teachers' ability to become um, creative, critical in, in terms of delivering um, the content and the skills, something like that. Um, it, it's really a challenge for for uh, for everybody, especially for the teachers, um, how to really remodify uh, the the outcomes, the competency, uh, the intended curriculum into something that is more meaningful. Kanina you've mentioned about deep active learning and school collaborative learning. So so far, mm -hmm. do we have um, practices about? school collaborative learning in the context of online distance education. Meron na ba sa Japan right now? Something to be shared? Ah, so Japan kasi what happened to us really is we only closed the schools from April to May. I mean, that's the only online time. By June, back to face-to-face -to -face na kami. But yes, during that time, um, the teachers actually, the collaboration became stronger because everybody didn't know what to do. So the only thing that they can do is to support each other. So for example, one of the things, um, we had this during the round table. Um, one of the things that they did was, nagkaroon ngayon ng, okay, this group of teachers are to, with the students. So meron ganon, pero I'm not sure if that's exactly what you're looking for. Hindi rin siya masyadong isinulat. Nga, it was very short. And it wasn't that new idea of the teachers collaborating what was just really different was it was about online learning right mm -hmm. some professional learning community you know mom Ma surely mm -mm. okay yeah. thank you that's that's very interesting okay uh there's one more question from christian pimentel 
since we still have time, I'm asking Christian. Christian, uh, would you be willing to switch on your video so you can ask the question? Okay, yourself. Hi, Christian. You here? Christian is. Hello, right. po, Doctor Dita. Hi, Christian. See you. Okay. Uh, the... Hello, po, Ma'am Pauline. Can you hear me, po? Malino po ako. Loud and clear. Yes. Ayun po. Uh, Asin ko lang po kasi sa ano sa sa amin. Uh, parang two years ago na introduce yung lesson study kasi ang topic din namin is action research and and parang promising kasi pinapakita eh, talagang naka video uh, naka record yung uh, observation sa classroom tapos yung discussion ng mga faculty. Ang ano ko lang po, ang dilemma ko lang po kasi after Katulad pa ng ganito, when we discuss action research and these practices, parang nakaka-encourage. Pero pagdating na ng mismong magpa-plan na ng action research, tapos magkakaroon na ng discussion, parang some teachers shy away kasi parang this is additional task, additional uh, workload, lalo na ngayon in the new normal, in the public school, maraming mga trabaho. Parang minsan, how, parang ang, ang pinaka-question ko po, how can we encourage teachers that uh, instead of additional burden itong uh, action research and writing about a uh, profession uh, sa kanila, is this will help them instead of a burden. Ano pong encouragement nyo po? Okay. That's a very good question. Kasi yan din yung naging question sa akin nun. Um, there are some strategies. One, I had to talk to the school admin. Na to tell them na pwede po bang ito yung gawin namin, submit nila instead of RPMS. You know, you add another value to what they have to do. Kasi yung, ah, this is for my professional growth. Marirealize lang yun ang mga teachers based on our experience habang tumatagal eh. Habang nagre-reflect sila. Pero dun sa umpisa, just to really have them be in the project, they have to have external motivation. One, re one that we had was, yun nga po, for the RPMS, pwede bang ito yung isubmit nila. So, meron kang end goal. Yung isa namang naging motivation is, katulad niyan, may aral. Ang ginagawa namin din dito is meron kaming, kaya kami may roundtable kasi doon ng mga teachers ipepresent yung practice records nila. So, hindi ka a-attend doon nang wala kang dadalhin. Parang, ang pwedeng gawin ngayon is para may papresent tayo sa aral. Why don't we go through this? And then as you go through this, ang nakita namin sa experiences namin, the teacher becomes more engaged than expected. May isang question din na, how do you um, what's this, um, encourage those who are not writers to write? This is where support group comes oh, yeah. in. One of, the okay, sige. Um, sagutin mo na rin. Pauline, go. <laughs> One of the teachers I was working with, nagsabi siya, sa umpisa pa lang, no, parang hindi po ako writer. <laughs> hindi ako magaling sa... <laughs> So, ang nangyari, dun sa group, isang group, merong English teacher naman na sobrang into writing. So, parang nangyari na, o oh, sige ah, kapag may kailangan siya about writing, pwede bang sa'yo siya magtanong? So, the idea of lesson study is hindi dapat pare-pareho sila ng interest. Mas maganda na diverse yung group mo, yung action research group mo. Kasi nga, yung bawat isa sa inyo, may sarili-sarili kayong strength that you would know how to encourage each other. Doon sa isang group, merong isang, alam niyo yung OC na makulet. So, sila yung, hoy, next meeting ganito. Hoy, next meeting ganito. Tapos, for the recording, ang nangyari is inikot namin yung facilitation. Kasi kapag laging isang tao lang yung nagpa-facilitate, the others would tend to, you know, just rest and take a laid-back um, role. So umiikot ngayon yung pag-facilitate ng discussion. But more than that, really, the most important one is to actually find time for it. Kaya yung isa yung ngayong project ko with Sarangani, ginagamit namin yung learning action cell. So we wrote dun sa principal na parang we would want to make use of the learning action cell every week. Tapos dun namin nilay out yung at least for the first six months activities. Kaya pag ganitong oras, ang lahat iniisip is oras to for the lesson study and for the writing. So hindi yan lagi usap, usap, usap because it's very important that in that one hour, we had time na 30 minutes writing. Yung remaining 30 minutes, ano yung naisulat mo ngayon? Parang yung ginawa po natin. May pinabasa ako sa inyo, hindi ko siya pinatapos. But kung hanggang saan yung natapos nyo, ref let's reflect on that one. I hope that answered your question. 
Wow, thank you. Okay, thank you, Dean Christian. So yeah, uh, Pauline already started advertising on that one. So there is one of the reasons why we are also doing this adult online lecture is we want you to you know start doing your action research with the hope that come adult 2021 we will all see you share what you have done uh, uh, throughout this period. Okay, and we'd love to see you face to face face to face if we can already uh, do face to face by then apparently may nakita akong news na by april medyo okay nang lahat okay aral is usually is slated uh, sometime in may so that's why we're not making official announcements yet whether it's going to be fully digital or hybrid or face to face because we are still hopeful that it's going to be face to face okay the latest news that i've seen so far is that by april everything is going to be fine so let's uh you know, I'm, we're hoping for that one. But that's what we want our charmers to do, okay? And that's why we're giving you uh, this on, adult online series every Monday, okay? And that's also our commitment to our basic ed teachers. We want to help you come up with your own topics uh, on action research, not only for sharing at the adult uh, Congress, but of course, for your, for your own teaching, for your own uh, schools, and ultimately, for your own students okay that's what this online lecture is all about okay do we have more questions for our speaker i think rent uh gabay your question has already been addressed by pauline okay yeah this is what i like actually about uh, our online uh, lecture series you, you know very interesting exchange of ideas okay mm -hmm. very engaging and and uh based on of course the comments coming from our timers they are learning a lot from uh, the speakers and from other ARs who are always here. Okay, wala lang si Dr. Bingayon, but most of the time they are here. Dr. Aguha, yeah, Dr. Erabos, and Dr. Kahimat, okay, Dr. Deleon, everyone else. Okay, thank you so much for uh, sharing also your expertise to all charmers. Any other questions? Okay, so kung wala na po tayong questions, so at this point, before we go to the usual picture taking, uh, I'm going, uh, Miss Liz, please flash the, okay, uh, certificate of appreciation. So at this point, I'd like to uh, present the certificate of appreciation to our featured speaker. Okay, there you go. So, uh, ayan. Grabe ang haba ng iyong pangalan, Pauline. Oh. <laughs> Sabi ko, Patrice, okay? So, uh, let me read. The De La Salle University, Brother Andrew Gonzalez, FSC, College of Education. Ang haba po ng aming pangalan ng aming college, okay? Uh, I hope you, you still remember Brother Andrew Gonzalez. Uh, he used to be DepEd Secretary, okay? He, he used to be our president at the LSU too. And so, our Perfect. college is named after him. Uh -uh. Naging... naging uh, mentor mo siya. I mean, naging, nabutan mo siya sa DLSU. Nabutan, years, so like, yes. nabutan ko siya dun sa uh, last few years ni Brother Andrew. So our college is called BAGSED. Okay? I mean, that's the acronym. Most colleges in the Philippines are just called CED or College of Education. But ours is very unique. We call it BAGSED. That's the Brother Andrew Gonzalez FSC College of Education. This office, the La Salle Institute for, the, Devel for Development and Educational Research or LEADER, and action research, action learning adult. So, ang dami-dami natin mga, okay, mga kailang i-memory sa mga initialism. Present the Certificate of Appreciation to Miss, okay, sana madiretso ko to, Miss Pauline Antheris M. Mangolabnan. Ooh, okay, conducting the DLS with Bagsen Leader Adult. Online lecture series entitled, Writing in the Realm of the Classroom, How Can Teachers Write About Their Practices, held on October 19, 2020, 10 a.m. to 12 noon via Zoom. Signed, uh, Dr. Raymond C. Season, our, our dean, myself, and Dr. Maricar Esprudente, the Congress Chair for Aral. Aral. Okay, so uh, again, thank you very much, uh, Pauline, for accepting our invite and for inserting this online series in your busy schedule in Japan. Thank you so much. Yep. We Thank, you so much. Thank, you. Thank you so much. So while we, okay, while Liz will be posting the link. Ma'am Shirley, may favor po ako. Yes po. 
If only, if only you have time po. Um, we have this survey for online learning. Yung mga teachers na go online learning. If you could click it while you also do the form po. Nasa chat box. Kung may oras lang po kayo, I'd really, really appreciate it. For sure, sure. Ayan, okay. Biso it. And then you can add me po sa Facebook. Kasi since I'm part of the OECD, yung kaninang naging issue na as teachers, minsan policies, di ba? So ngayon po, we're trying to really listen to the teachers because we are working with policy makers. So please try to help yung mga ganitong surveys kasi this is when, parang voting, you get a chance, you get a voice. Maraming salamat po. Yep. Okay. Napaka-importante ng mga surveys. Okay. I'm just preparing parang a lecture on social linguistics and parang Philippines is the most surveyed country in Asia. Okay. Okay. At this point, we'd like to invite you to our next uh, uh, aral uh, series by next Monday. Please flash the poster for next Monday. Ayan. So you can already make... Uh, ayan. So our next speaker is Mr. JP Limueco. He's also a PhD student under Dr. Uh, Prudente. And uh, yep, okay. his topic is Action Research, Communication, and the 21st Century Digital Learning, Improving the New Normal teaching okay so uh if you have colleagues who have not heard or of charm or aral lecture series please do invite them so even if we i know how busy you are in your own online learning for our teachers okay i hope you can still make time for our monday our community habit of action research on mondays from 10 to 12. as you know 21st century teachers i know we can multitask so while we are you know, doing or preparing our uh, lectures, we can also attend, uh, you know, free online lectures such as this one, okay? And that's what we are actually doing all the time. We are all multi-taskers. Uh, so, Liz has already posted, okay, the link to the evaluation form, and I hope you can also accomplish the link um, posted by Pauline for the um, um, survey, okay? So at this point, I think we're all done. So I'll, we'll see you again on uh, Monday, 10 to 12. Again, on behalf of uh, the LSU Bagset leader, thank you again, Patrice, for accepting our invite and for that very insightful uh, lecture. Thank you to everyone who attended, who attended this lecture. Thank you, uh, Denise, okay, for um, participating too and for helping me out in here and for taking the... The, the place of Dr. Uh, Bing. Thanks to our usual charmers. I hope to see you again next Monday, 10 to 12. Uh, my former students here and former uh, DLSU peeps and everyone else. See you again on Monday, same time, 10 to 12. Bye, charmers. Bye.